When you are programming, it's a good idea to break the program into specific modules. Modularization is a really common concept in programming. And what it does is it breaks things down into cohesive tasks, meaning that every piece of that task should be tightly related. So if you have a task of make breakfast, the first portion, you don't have to go in and say, I'm going to open the refrigerator. I'm going to get out the eggs. I'm going to get out to the, the milk. I'm going to pour them in a bowl. I'm going to scramble them. I'm going to put them on the stove. If you say, I'm going to make breakfast, most people know what, it, what that is. But only parts of the equation, only things that relate back to the task make breakfast should be part of it. Letting the dog outside, while it may occur at the same time, should not be part of the make breakfast module. When you're modularizing, what you're doing is you're breaking the program into small parts that you can potentially reuse and that you can break them into logical parts to have them as more manageable chunks. So it provides abstraction, like the example I gave of making breakfast. You don't need to know every single task. It allows you to reuse code. My favorite example of this is we shouldn't all have to exactly manage our printers. We should be able to just say print, and it should be able to find our printer and go print to it. That is letting you reuse it, because regardless of what program you write, and you might write 30 programs in a given month or semester, you shouldn't have to write the print routine. Actually, that would be in a library. The, so things that you're going to do a lot, you shouldn't have to do more than once. It also lets a lot of different programmers work on the same program. Think of the larger programs we play, whether it's a video game, a word processing program, something that lets you do your tax return. Programs that are that large are often done by more than one programmer, and they separate the tasks. So each programmer will work on a specific task at a given time, and it's very important to have them clearly separated where everything that belongs with that task is included, and extraneous things that don't really belong with the task aren't included. And there are some tasks that are so common to programming that most programming languages have libraries to handle them. So libraries will contain common things like file input and output. When you write a program, you should be able to tell your program, get input from the user. And the, and the computer should know how to accept the user typing into a keyboard. You shouldn't have to code that. You shouldn't have to code how to display something to the screen. You just tell it display or see out or print, whatever you want it to do, and it should know how to do that over and over again. So the really common tasks that are used a lot are saved in complete libraries, and you just call those libraries when you write your program, and that gives you access to the code. So modularization might occur in a program that has different pieces of the program that it will call at one time. It also allows you to have different programs that share modules, like printing or displaying things to the screen, that will be called anywhere. And those, when they're shared by multiple programs, are frequently stored in libraries. When you're planning modularization, a common way to break down the major functions of your program is by using a hierarchical chart. And you'll normally have an, an initialization or housekeeping routine that opens your files, does a priming read, just gets things ready to work. Then you might have multiple processes that you go through to complete your program, to do the work of the program, then an end of job. Let's think about this with a real example. Let's say that you're running a payroll program. When you're initializing it, you'll probably open the file of what the employees worked that week. You'll get everything set up to go. You'll make sure that you have everything that you need. When you're processing it, you're going to go through and you're going to calculate their pay, and you're going to calculate overtime, and then you're going to subtract their taxes. You're going to go through a bunch of routines. How much did they earn? How much overtime did they earn? You're going to take out federal taxes. You're going to take out health insurance, and so that you'll end with a final amount, and it will document all of that. The last thing that you'll do is you'll close all of the files, make every sure everything is properly shut, and that pretty much cleans up the program. So that's the sort of structured program that you're going to go through if you're doing something in batch processing where you just continue working through a file. And that's where the first computer program started. There is another type of programming. Um, it's object-oriented programming, but really what we're talking about, object-oriented is a way of accomplishing event-driven programming. If you're writing something like a word processing program, you can't predict what letter somebody's going to type next, what order things are going to happen. So it has a slightly different method of programming that we'll get into later in the course. 
when we're first starting, we're going to really refer to batch processing, things that are going to go through and happen in a series of steps that are relatively predictable or that we take control over. Either we're working with input-output that we control or we're going through a file and doing a bunch of stuff to data in a file. So this is how you would plan the modularization of a program, breaking it down into its largest cohesive programming parts.